just did this drawing quick to explain a little bit closer how I connected the panels. We have 600 watts of solar, and it's a series parallel connection. So the ends are connected negative to negative, positive to positive. Those go into a YMC4 connector, bringing it down to one wire each. And in this positive, we have another Y connector with a 10 amp inline fuse. It's all 10 gauge wire. So then in between those, we go from positive to negative, positive to negative, and then same thing here, positive, negative, positive, negative. That's how I connected my panels. So I could stay at a lower amperage rate and keep the 10 gauge wire. And then I will go over each component in the system in detail and just explain what it's for. So the positive and negative from the solar panels come in here into the house, into this Ames Power PV disconnect switch. So if I need to do any work in here during the day while we're getting sun, I can just turn this off and then do what I need to do. That goes up into our Mitron Smart Solar Charge Controller. It's got Bluetooth so I can see exactly how much power we're getting and using so this is 10 gauge wire going in, but then we have four gauge wire coming out. You can use six gauge wire for this. Four gauge is actually too big. I had to taper the ends off so I could fit it in there, but it's better to go with something bigger that can definitely handle all the power. So um, we go up into a 60 amp fuse on the positive. That positive comes up, connects to our positive bus bar right here. And then the negative goes up to the negative bus bar right there. That's the charge controller. And then the bus bars connect to the battery. This is a positive. Batteries are connected positive to positive, negative to negative with four gauge wire. You can use six gauge again, but I had four gauge. So yeah, this is powering our bus bar here. The negative goes directly to the shunt, this smart battery monitor here. So this is the negative coming right here. And then this side goes to our battery switch which then goes to the bus bar. Um, this is all one aught cable, but you can use the same size as you use for your battery. I just had this extra and I wanted to make sure there wasn't any voltage drop coming from the battery to the switch and everything. So I oversized it a bit there. Um, this shunt has a power cable here for the display which is down here. Um, and then that gray cord is the data cable that connects to the back of the display. So then we have our inverter cables. So this is a 3000 watt pure sine wave inverter. We have, there's the earth right there grounding to our grounding bar. Also, we have the solar charge controller grounded there. And then the this is the ground for the negative bus bar, which is right there. So we have four uh, cables from the inverter to the batteries. That's the negative, even though it's a red, I have the black heat shrink on there. This, there's 
a little bit of copper exposed, so I just covered that up with black tape. But that's the positive coming up here, going to a 300 amp T fuse. These are quick blow fuses, which are recommended for inverters. Going up to the bus bar there. All right, and now this is our transfer switch. The whole reason we built this system was to power our sump pump in an emergency or a power outage. So the way this works is this is plugged into our outlet in the house, right over here. That powers the sump pump normally. That's the sump pump plugged in right there, going to the load. So the sump pump's normally powered by the outlet, but when we lose power, it's also plugged into the inverter, so it'll automatically kick on through the inverter when the power goes out and power the sump pump. Yeah, so that's a basic overview of everything in the system. And then what I'm currently powering is, like I said, the sump pump is the main thing that this system is for. And then I have this power strip plugged into the inverter so I can charge my laptop I charge some of these drill batteries and stuff like that. This cord is actually going up to a motion sensor light in our basement. So that just turns on when we walk down here. It's right by the door. It turns off automatically when after about five minutes of us not being down here. So. We're powering that with this system, and it's all working great. Um, you know, once when we have full sun, we get about two kilowatts of power in, per day from the solar array, which charges the batteries up pretty fast, especially since we only use about 10% of the power each day. Um, on days when we have full sun, I do use this more. I hook more things up to it and charge more things and just get the most use out of it. If you see this little motion sensor light here, it's actually connected to our a separate system over here. This is running off a 100 watt panel, just one, and then it's hooked up to this um, lead acid battery here. It's a pretty high capacity for a lead acid battery, but you know, it's just one battery here. So I have um, four of these motion sensor lights on this throughout our basement. They're just smaller ones, and uh, it's a way to use the solar without overusing it because, like I said, these turn off, these actually turn off in like a half a minute without motion. So so yeah, get good use out of it without using it too much. I also charge little things here with the USB ports. And then I put these uh, copper clips on here, I guess you'd clamps or whatever they are, so that um, if these batteries are full and I'm not using it too much, I can just unplug those, unclip them, and then clip them onto these bus bars. And all I would have to do is change the settings in that charge controller over to lithium iron. And then I can charge up these batteries with that also. Or my lawnmower battery or any other battery really, but you wanna have it grounded just in case. Um, yeah, so everything's grounded here. We have two separate grounding rods outside, one for each system. This one, it doesn't have a grounding bar like this. It just has one connecting to the negative on the battery going out. And then this one is 
where it goes out to the grounding rod. I just wanted to explain that system real quick since you can see some of the wiring in this part so so no one's confused you know what all that's for i'm not a professional i'm just learning as i go and this is what i've come up with so far i really appreciate you watching and don't forget to like leave me a comment and let me know what you think if you have any questions or suggestions i'm definitely open to that and subscribe to the channel because i'm going to be doing a giveaway pretty soon of one of these lights so make sure you're getting the details on that thank you for watching